against rulers of darkness of this age and all that. So we need to be mindful of the kind of spiritual environment where we find ourselves. As a matter of fact, lacking knowledge of what God says in the Bible about the enemy of man, about the devil, is synonymous with somebody walking barefoot in a land infested with deadly snakes. I wonder how far that person would go without being beaten by a snake. So, my dear people of God, this prayer is a prayer that God is using to enlighten us to be very prayerful. You remember that the Israelites were dying in the desert because they were beaten by the poisonous snakes or serpents. You know, do you know how many spiritual deaths and even physical deaths that are taking place in our time because people have allowed themselves unguided and therefore beaten by the enemy spiritually? So when we look, look at the Bible and they study the Bible and make the Bible our companion, then we begin to harvest knowledge of how to skillfully attack the enemy so that we do not become victims, all right? So I wish to make it clear that the ignorance of the scripture is an unfortunate situation that we have found ourselves. It is an unfortunate spiritual crisis of our time when we find ourselves in a generation that does not take the Bible as their own um, food, as their companion. It is very dangerous. This is why we have to train and teach our children, encourage them to attend mass, to read the Bible, to, and those to, to study the Bible. It is very, very important. Amen. If we know and believe the scripture, then we will not doubt what the Bible says about spirits and the activities. And the, on the contrary, if when we don't know or believe the scriptures, we won't know much about the, the enemy. Okay? We'll be able to know much about the enemy that wants to kill us at all costs. So God continues to lament when his people are not making the scripture a part of their life. So, my dear friends in Christ, I wish to make it clear that when we look closely, we see reasons why we should be people of prayer. When we feel the abrasive rub of devil's reality, when we experience the, the heartbreaking loss of a child, when we see death here and there, when we see a lot of death taking place, accidents taking place here and there, these are all signs, symptoms that we are living in a dangerous time. But it's like being in a civil war. However, you need protection. You do, you do not go to get into war without protecting yourself. So we need to call on God, the Almighty God, to destroy all the destructive forces of the evil that have come to annihilate the human race in the name of Jesus. Think of the hunger, the disease, the tragedies of war, the joblessness, the injustice, the kind of suffering in our land today. It is just very clear that the enemy are setting up what I may call monuments of horror just to attack humanity and make life miserable for man. I do know that the scorpion stings, but we should not forget that the enemy also stings. <laughs> he stings poison, poisons into the life of people. And so as we engage in prayer, we are protecting ourselves from the poisonous and deadly punches of the enemy in the name of Jesus. So we continue to cry to God because it is only from him that we shall get our salvation. Only from him shall we be able to conquer all that the enemy wants to achieve in our lives, basically to destroy us in the name of Jesus. So we continue to cry to God who can never abandon us. We continue to realize that by way of prayer, we are stopping the advancements of the enemies that want to arrest us and they paralyze us. 
Many people live in chains, chains of guilt and brokenness. All these are all the manifestations of the enemies. But as we continue to cry to God, he will deliver us from the misery that has been projected at us to make us to live in shame. God does not want us to live in shame. He wants us to live victoriously. And for this reason, 1 John 3 verse 8 tells us, Jesus Christ comes to destroy all the works of the devil. So we're not afraid of the devil. We're not afraid of the death that he brings. But we know that there is a death that gives life. And that is the death of Jesus that gives life and brings life to each and every one of us. So just that to have Jesus with us and in us is what we need to overcome the destroying forces of the enemy. Do always remember, Jesus comes to destroy the works of the devil. So whatever you are thinking that is taking place in your family, always know that God has the final say and he will fight your battle Amen. and he will crush the head of the enemy. He will crush the powers of the enemies. He will never allow the forces of darkness to prevail in your life. He will never allow every voice from the pit of hell to continue to speak against you. For God will silence them in the name of Jesus. Do not forget that God has given you the authority to overcome the powers of the enemies. Mother, people of God, the Bible makes it clear to us in Psalm 35 verse 7. For without cause, they have hidden their net for us in a pit. They have hidden their net for us in a pit. That is the scheme of the enemy, to set up a pit for a child of God to fall into. But God sends an angel, and he has empowered that angel to seize, to chain, to bind, to throw into the bottomless pit of fire that very enemy of man. And this you find in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 to 3. And we are inviting that same angel that God has empowered to chain and bind and throw the enemy into the bottomless pit. We invite that angel into this prayer to go from home to home, from family to family, and from church to church, from ministry to ministry, to arrest every works of the enemies that have seized or arrested the people of God. My dear people of God, it is our time with our Jesus. And that time is now that he can never abandon you. Don't forget that today is the day of your salvation. If you would not give God rest, I tell you, get that miracle. Don't forget Isaiah chapter 6 to verse 7. And the Bible says, give him no rest. Give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. If somebody will not give God rest by your prayer, I tell you, God will settle Jerusalem. Jerusalem means the city of peace. But for you to have that peace, you need to fight the enemy. You need to cry to God to give you the peace you are believing him for. And that God will give you that peace. Satan has a legacy, the legacy of shame, the legacy to destroy. But we know that Jesus has his own legacy, the legacy to give us life, life in fullness. And that life is a life that is our heritage as children of God. Many people have seen the works of the devil in our time, and they begin to wonder, when will this devil be defeated? Anyway, that is not a case to deal with tonight. But we do know that as we continue to pray, we will deliver ourselves, we will deliver our families, and God will not allow the enemy to prevail in our, in our lives. So the enemy is defeatable. Oh yes, he's defeatable. And uh, Jesus is here to defeat him completely and they strip him of all his power, of all his forces, God is able to defeat him in the name of Jesus. So do not lose courage or lose hope because of this situation you are going through, because of this disaster you are going through. Do not lose courage in the name of Jesus. Do not fear the pains you are going through. For as you persevere in prayer, God will surely arise and fight your battle for you. That God is our God. He is a God of unfailing promises. For he comes to give victory. And his victory will put smiles on your face. It is with the audacity of an un unrelenting prayer that you can trouble 
the enemy's peace and even proceed to throw in his face a, a mocking utterance that the Bible gives us in Isaiah 8 verse 10. Devise a plan, but it will not, it will not happen. It will be thwarted. Devise a plan, state a proposal, but it shall not stand. Why? Because God is with us. It is with the determination of prayer that we can stand the enemy that want to frustrate us. It is with the determination to tarry in prayer that every plan of the enemy against you is frustrated. And that is the message of the psalmist in Psalm 33, verse 10. And my dear friends, we cannot forget in Job 5, verse 12, that it is only by the power of Christ, power of our God, that the craftiness of the enemy's hands shall be thwarted. And God says in Job 5, verse 12, that he shall abort every enterprise established by the enemy to stop your testimony. So God has a big plan to make you laugh and smile in a big way in the name of Jesus. I think of Isaiah 14, verse 46 as, as, as a winning song of victory for somebody. That, the, that message of Isaiah 14, verse 46, the Bible uses to encourage us, to tell us that victory is coming and that God will not relent in fighting the battle. And the Bible says in Isaiah 14, verse 46, how the oppressor has ceased, how his insolence has ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. The Lord has broken the rod of the wicked with unceasing blows. Has it ever occurred to your mind that the Lord dishes out, punches, blows unceasingly on the face or the faces of the enemy? Has, has it ever occurred to your mind? So your God is a fighter. He knows how to fight battles for you. Today, the action of spiritual forces is becoming even more evident with each passing day. And the result is that many people of God are living in bondage as captives. I remember the case of the boy, the, the young man um, who was declared a demon-possessed boy and uh, the enemy put him in the caves, in the tombs. So he was living among the dead. This was a, a, a very terrible situation that, that this young man found himself. And this was the work of the enemy. But I tell you, Jesus came to the misery of that boy and delivered him from that bondage. He delivered him from the mess. His, his destiny was already messed up. But when Jesus came into his life, he was delivered. He was delivered. So it is for you, no matter how bad your case is, Jesus will deliver you. Always remember the story of that, that demoniac, that his story reminds us that God will always and can change every ugly situation, no matter how bad it is. It is very unpleasant when people live in bondage, but it is very pleasant when people are touched by the power of Jesus. My dear people of God, even though the Bible did not tell us the name of that man that was declared a demoniac in the Bible, but that is a picture of the situation that many people have found themselves living in chains, living in captivity, living in a cold tomb of life, living in shackles. And God is saying, I have come to take away that disgrace. So I don't know the family that have been put in a state of disgrace, but God is able to take away that disgrace and give you grace. And that's what I've come to cry to him in this prayer. And that God who is able to do all things will deliver you and your family. He will deliver us one by one. Do not forget that in the case of that demoniac, that the Bible tells us in Luke 8, verse 27 to 29. And for a long time, as the Bible says, he had won no clothes. Can you imagine that? The enemy stripped him of, of his glory, stripped him of everything. And he had no clothes put on. And he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. 
driven into the wilds by the devil. That is how Luke put it in Luke chapter 8, verse 27 to 29. Nobody would make a choice to be like that man. But that is the choice of the enemy concerning the children of God. And so, my dear friends, in Mark 5, verse 5, then the gospel says that night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and the bruising himself with stones. Uh, uh, the, the, you see, the reason why we are looking at the case of this demoniac is for you to see what the invisible forces can do to a life that it happens to capture. You see how this young man was living in pains, bruising himself, howling in pains, and they, they forced him to use stones to, to cut himself. Can you imagine the kind, of, the kind of wounds he was carrying, the kind of pains he was living in? It was a terrible state of degraded life. Okay? It was a terrible life. But one day, Jesus visited him and he took away his mess, returned his mind, and uh, delivered him completely. I pray for families that have something that looks like this kind of case of this boy. May God visit your family and deliver you and give you good news. May you receive that good news. Jesus is our good news. He gives good news to his children. And may you receive that good news today. He has come to free you from satanic strongholds, to free your family from every established satanic structure or government that over your family. May God this night deliver you from that slavery in the name of Jesus. That battle is the Lord's. So says the Lord. So says the Lord Almighty himself. So we are praying against the shadows of death in the name of Jesus. Maybe you have found yourself uh, in the bottom, at, at the, the bottom of the pit. There are people who have found themselves falling down, 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 and now they have hit the bottom. Like being in the worst possible pit, in the worst possible situation. And you're asking yourself, can I come out of this? But, well, let me remind you, that was the case of the demoniac. He found himself in the worst possible situation he could ever be in life. <laughs> but Jesus lifted him up, took him out of that pit. You see that? He was in a messy situation. Messy, M-E-S-S-Y. Mercy, a very messy situation. But when God came, God came with mercy. It may be you are in a messy situation. What you need, the mercy of God. <laughs> Jesus lifted him up. And he will lift you up. When you hit the bottom of the pit, Jesus will lift you up. No matter how bad it is, Jesus will lift you up to the heights. Amen? So be courageous. Be courageous. Don't give up. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 19 says, how gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, as soon as he hears, he will answer you. Ha <laughs> ha. Jesus. My people of God, we are at this hour standing against every form of hopelessness that have been projected into our lives. We are praying against every wall of Jericho set up by the enemies. Today, as we pray, they must fall and fall into pieces never to repair again in the name of Jesus. They must be beaten and, and be destroyed because our God is here to fight for us. We remember the case of the man who was on his way, on the Jericho way, and he was beaten down, beaten half dead by the thieves. But Jesus tells us in that parable how the good Samaritan rescued that man. And Jesus is that good Samaritan that is coming to you where the invisible forces have beaten you down. And the, the man of Calvary is going to lift you up. He's coming to help you. He's coming to vindicate you. He's coming to destroy all that have come to destroy you 
in the name of Jesus. Maybe like Jeremiah, you have been put in the pit, but Jesus says, I will come to deliver you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So, my dear people of God, this is a very serious prayer. Look at a case of Pharaoh, what Pharaoh did to the people of Israel. Look at what Goliath did to the people of Israel. And you will begin to wonder, but where are the Pharaohs and Goliaths of our time? Anyway, that cancer is a, is, a, is a Goliath. That cancer is a Pharaoh. Every spirit, anything that wants to stop your mission in life is a Pharaoh, is a Goliath. That sickness that wants to take your life is a Pharaoh. And so we are standing against them with the prayer tonight. The Philistines place a demand on the life of Samson to destroy him. The Philistines could as well be referred as the enemies of Israel. And they wanted to destroy Samson. They targeted Samson. They targeted Samson because Samson was full of power. If you carry special anointing, the enemy will come after you. They will come after you, the Samson in your life. Oh, Jesus. They want to capture the, you. They want to chain you. They want to force you to shamefully march through the mocking crowd, jeering at you shamefully, flanking by your sides and giving you blows. But you know what? No matter how bad it is, God says, if you will trust in me, I will make a way for you. So my dear friends in Christ, let us not look hopeless as if we have no father who is interested in the rescue of his children. Yes, the gravity of wickedness may be high, but you know what? Our God has a big plan with his angels to deliver us from that ugly situation in the name of Jesus. So maybe you have already, you have already been captured like Samson. But if Samson had the privilege of having people pray for him, I tell you, Samson would have been rescued. And there is a Samson today that is going to be rescued. So if you think you are in bondage, you are going to be rescued. For God is going to move for you in the name of Jesus. God is able to deliver the church from every powers of darkness that have risen against the church in the name of Jesus. So we are calling on the mighty Father in heaven, standing on Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 11, in which we are invited to take our stand against the devil's scheme. We have to take our stand. Taking a stand means to decide, you know, to decide to fight, not to shake, not to fear. When you are fearing, you have not taken stand. But when you have faith, then you have taken stand. So we need to take, take a stand. The, the Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So we're not standing on the power of man, but in the power of our God. So even in the difficult times, in the times of trials, of pains and struggle, we are anchoring on the power, the mighty power of our God. And even when sometimes it appears as if God is far away from us, it is just a test of faith. And even in such situations, we should not allow the enemies to take away our faith. So my people of God, this is the moment that God wants to touch your life. And we're thanking him for this message and we'll give him glory for this message. And as we're getting into a time to pray, a time of warfare, we're asking him to use this prayer of this night to completely expose all the unseen forces that have come to fight against your life. So I invite you even to the prayer point number one of the chapter one of the prayer, mat prayer material we're using, in which we're invited by the author to ask to reflect on how this chapter exposing the unseen forces ministers to you. How has this message, this message of this chapter ministered to you? And then ask God to expose every invisible war raging against your life. Ask God to expose every invisible war, every invisible power, every invisible agenda 
of the enemies against your life. That enemy must be exposed in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. It's ours. If you understand the, the hidden force behind what you're going through, then you will know how to fight. This is why this chapter is so important. So we're asking God to expose every invisible war, all the schemes that are going on behind the scene. May God expose them tonight. We ask God to reveal to us all the open doors that have allowed the enemy to have a free access into our lives, into our families. We are closing those doors now through which the enemies are getting access into our lives and families in the name of Jesus. When we live in sin, we open the door for the enemy to come in. So when there are causes in the family that have not been dealt with, the, the cause opens the door for the enemies to come in. So we're asking God even now to reveal to us ways that we have opened the doors directly or indirectly, indirectly, in which we have allowed the enemy to have access into our family. May God reveal. May God reveal. And in the way that we have, through sin, opened these doors, we're asking God for mercy tonight. We ask him to forgive us, to cleanse us with the most precious blood. Oh, Jesus. We're asking God to destroy the strongholds of all evil forces, all the evil forces and all their networks that have been set up to arrest you. Let God destroy that network. Let God destroy their networks. Can somebody begin to pray now? There is something called satanic networks. If you don't destroy their networks, their GSM and broadcasting stations, I tell you, you, you they, they will mess you up. So we cry to the Lord even now that every satanic network that has been established against us, we cancel right them right now. We cancel them right now. In the name of Jesus, let them be set on fire. Let them be set on fire. No network survives a fire. When there's a fire burning, it begins to destroy the webs, begin to destroy the cobwebs. All that network will be destroyed as the power of God is moving tonight in the name of Jesus. And we are pleading the most precious blood of Jesus Christ to shield us from all satanic assignments over and against our families in the name of Jesus. We are covering our families with the most precious blood of Jesus. And we decree that by the power of the blood of Jesus, that no weapon formed against us are prosper. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Talk to him now. Let him move in the family. Let him touch everyone in the family. Let him vindicate your family. Let him make a way for you in the family. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Begin to talk to him now. And at this hour, we are invited to engage Angel Michael, St. Michael, the Archangel, in a prayer at this hour. In the name of Jesus. St. Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in the day of battle. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Remember that in the prayer manual, this prayer is on page 19 of the prayer manual. And as we are praying now, we're invoking the power and the intercessory power of Archangel Michael. As we pray, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. In the name of Jesus, may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking for the ruin of souls. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord, let God, through the ministry of Archangel Michael, begin to arrest all the satanic forces that have risen against us in the name of Jesus, call upon that mighty angel of God to begin to fight this battle, to begin to fight the enemies in the name of Jesus. We need that prayer at this hour. Let Angel Michael fight for us in the name of Jesus. And as we're making this prayer, we are tapping into the Anima Christi prayer. Oh, Jesus, you will find this prayer in page 20 of the prayer manual. And as we make this prayer, we're asking the soul of Christ to sanctify us. We are crying that the body of Christ shall save us in the name of Jesus. We are crying that the blood of Jesus shall inebriate us in the name of Jesus. We are crying that the water from the side of Christ 
shall wash us clean in the name of Jesus. We are crying and asking God through his passion to strengthen us so that we shall not give up in a time of struggle, in a time of trials and temptations in the name of Jesus. Oh, good Jesus, hear us, oh Lord, with your wounds and within your wounds, hide us, separated from you. Let us never be separated from you again in the name of Jesus. Do not allow us to be separated from you again. Do not allow the enemy to separate us from you again. From the evil one, protect us. At the hour of our death, call us and bid us never to separate from you again. Oh, mighty Jesus, we need you in a special way tonight. Fight the battle of your people in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, at the hour of our death, call us and close to you, bid us that with your saints and angels, we may be praising you forever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Yes, my Lord. We stand on Psalm 102, and we ask God through this psalm, to you this psalm, to deliver us from every spiritual affliction that we are going through. May God deliver us from all their schemes in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Papa, we trust in you. As we stand on Psalm 102, we cry to you with the psalmist, praying and crying to you, Lord, to hear our prayer. Oh, Lord, let our cry for help come to you. Do not hide your faith from us when we are in distress, Papa. Come to answer us. Turn your ear to us when we call. Answer us quickly. For our days vanish like smoke. Our bones burn like, like glowing embers. My heart is brighted and wither like a grass. Oh, Jesus, Father, Lord, come to help us. Come to deliver us. Do not allow us to be crushed. Do not allow us to be like destitutes. Father, come to our aid. We need you, mighty Jesus. Oh, Jesus, according to Psalm 102, verse 5, when our distress, we groan aloud, and we, we have become like people without bones. But Father, O oh Lord, we know our strength coming from you. And we ask you, Father, come to see us through. Oh Lord, how long will you look on and see the situation we're going through? Father, arise and fight the battles of your children in the name of Jesus. Destroy the shadows of death in the name of Jesus. Do not allow us to wither like grasses in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, Jesus, Father, we thank you. We'll give you all glory. Because we know you will never allow us to perish in the hands of the enemies. We know you will never allow us to wear the garment of shame in the name of Jesus. Do not allow us to be discarded when you come to deliver your children in the name of Jesus. Father, the hour has come. Oh, Jesus, my dear people of God, with the prayer point number five, we are taking authority and standing against the spiritual enemies standing on Ephesians chapter 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of darkness and wickedness in the heavenly places. As we have been revealed, as this has been revealed to us, we are now praying and asking the Holy Spirit through the ministry of the angels of God to release deadly punches on the spiritual enemies that have risen against us and we are attacking them through their operational powers so that they shall be destroyed in the name of jesus through this prayer we are crying to god to intercept all operations of the devil and all his spiritual tyrants that are working against us in the name of jesus yes my lord begin to pray now begin to attack them attack their weapons Attack, attack their vehicles of operations, all the gadgets the enemies are using to attack your life, this is the time to begin to attack them now in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, we are praying with prayer point number five, AI. As we begin to attack their weapons, may God begin to disable them. May God begin to attack their vehicles and begin to block their vehicles, begin to alter their vehicles so that the vehicles shall not move again, so that their vehicles shall not operate again. 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. We are setting their territories on fire. Their covens and altars and strongholds. We are setting on fire in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, we command them to be thrown into total confusion in the name of Jesus. And we march them into the abyss in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. We disarm all the enemies of their deadly power. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, we seize all their power to pray. Now, my dear people of God, it is very important for us to understand that this prayer point number 5AIV is very, very, very important. But for you to understand that prayer point number 5AIV, it is, it is very important to understand how the enemy operates. If you understand how they operate, then you can understand that prayer point. For example, the enemy can vanish. That is, they can disappear into the TA. They can vanish from one location into another location. That is, they can vanish from one location and they appear in another location. That is what is called teleportation. Teleportation, the ability of a, of a spirit to vanish from one location and they appear in another location. If you are dealing with a spirit with this kind of nature, you need to arrest him, arrest the spirit, pray against it, seize the power of teleportation. This is the kind of way you need to be praying today. And uh, a spirit can change from one form to another form, you know, to deceive somebody. They can change from one form to another form. This is what is called transformation. They can transform, that is changing form changing form from one form to the another. You have to understand that if there's a spirit with kind of characteristic, you then you have to attack them to seize the power to transform. There are certain spirits that they can, they can move objects. You know, can you imagine a hand holding an object? Now imagine a, an object moving without the hand holding it. You don't see the hand, but the object is moving. There's also, a, there's a class of spirits that operate in that way, okay? They move objects over a distance to hit people, to hit somebody by non-physical means. Sometimes you see magicians doing these kind of things. They do it with spiritual powers, demonic powers. This is what you call telekinesis. Telekinesis, it is a character and a property of spiritual forces. So if we want to understand these things, you know how to deal with them, amen? Now, there is another characteristic nature of spirits to, to have what they call knowledge. They can, they can gain knowledge of someone. They are not almighty to know all things, but they can spy. They can send monitoring spirits to get information. So this is what we call intuition, property of intuition. So we're going to disable all the knowledge of all they have in their knowledge bank. We alter and disable them and break up their database in the name of Jesus. Now, there is a power and a characteristic nature of a spirit to, to see far. Sometimes you wonder, why is it that troubles increase when blessings are about to come? What happens is that the enemy have seen that blessing coming, and then they come to fight. They come to fight. Because from far, they have seen it. Look at the case of Jesus, for example. Jesus was born, and the, the, the star of Jesus was seen from far from men of the Far East, okay? Now, in, in this case of Jesus, the men did not come to attack him. These were men that came to bless his life. But it's also possible that an enemy can see your star from far away. So they have what you call far seeing, far hearing, fearing from far, far touching, night vision, tracking, and all that. All the, I don't want to get into what I may call demonology, but I want to understand that these are issues to deal with in prayer. And this is what is called enhanced sensing. Enhanced sensing. Amen? Now, when we dealt with the Python spirits sometime last year, we saw that one of the characteristic nature of Python spirits or serpentine spirits is the power to manipulate. It is something that is common with all demons. They all have the power to manipulate. So we need to uh, attack the, the power to manipulate. Manipulation is simply making people behave as desired by the enemy. Okay? So we don't want to behave the way they want us to behave. Amen? Now, there's another characteristic nature of spirits. To enter into human beings or into animals 
or into animal bodies and use them, manipulate them, use them, possess them. Think of the case of Mark 5, verse 8 to 13, where Jesus, when he delivered the demoniac, the, the spirits, the demons in the demoniac entered into the pigs. You remember that story, right? Now, automatically, the pigs were all demonized. They were, they, they, they were possessed at that point in time. So that brings us to the property of spirits to possess. That was called spiritual possession. Okay? So there are also certain spirits that can fly, like the witches. They can fly like birds. So they have the property to fly. And there are also certain class of spirits that can duplicate themselves into many forms. You see a spirit that comes to attack you. You want to attack it back, it will turn into 10. <laughs> the same nature. You don't know which one to hit again. You are confused. You see that? That is called the power of duality. So um, we're not going to go further in this. Um, somewhere in this book, we may have the opportunity to go deeper in this aspect. So I have shared this with you just to enlighten you so that when you are praying, again, they have they are operational uh, activities or characteristics, you are able to understand what you are praying against. Amen? So we are now praying against all their power to seize. We seize their powers to vanish, their power to disappear into the thin air. We are destroy them now. All their power to have teleportation. We cancel right now. We seize right now. It shall not function again in the name of Jesus. The All their power started. to function in one way or the other by transformation. We seize them now in the name of Jesus. The power of telekinesis. We seize them now. The power of intuition and the hand sensing. We cancel now. We cancel now. The power of manipulation, demonic manipulations. We cancel now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we cancel them now. It's us. Yes, my Lord. Let me begin to pray. Every power of possession, we cancel now. We belong to Jesus. Our body belongs to Jesus. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, not the, not the body of demons, not the house of demons. And so any spirit of the enemy in my life, any demonic spirit that have possessed anybody in my family, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you now, come out and go to the abyss. So we seize your power of possession now. We seize your power to fly in the name of Jesus. All the witches and wizards are flying. We break their wings at this hour in the name of The only comfort to when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you... and demonic food soldiers so Me. They shall they shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. They shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Jesus, any tongue that rises against somebody in judgment, that tongue is broken now. That tongue is cut off in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. We need the fire of God. 
to deliver us now and give us the heritage we ought to have as servants and children of God. In the name of Jesus. It is moving oh. It is moving oh. The Holy Ghost power is moving oh. It is moving oh. It is moving, oh, the power of Jesus is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, the anointing of Jesus is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, the fire of Holy Ghost is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, the blood of Jesus is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, the rivers our is moving oh it 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 is moving oh the favor of jesus is moving oh it is moving oh it is moving oh the anointing of jesus is moving oh it is moving oh it is moving oh the miracle of Jesus is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, it is moving, oh, it is moving, oh. Oh, Jesus, the power of God is moving. That power of God is moving mightily. Oh, Jesus, the power of God is touching his people now. In the name of Jesus, that pressure of blood is moving into our families. In the name of Jesus. My friends, we need to deal with a very serious matter at this point in this prayer. And this will lead us into the ending session of this prayer meeting. And this is an invitation that is given to us in the prayer point number seven. And the author invites us to refresh our minds with the story of the six year old little boy that was having a kind of a weird and devilish behavior, which I shared with you at the beginning of this prayer. In that story, we see that that six-year-old boy was already a victim of demonic attack. Satan hates children because he understands that they carry the mantle that would destroy him. So they come to attack he comes to attack them. Satan knows that children are the next generation of warriors that God is training for war against the kingdom of darkness. He knows that. So he comes after them. Most children are traumatized. Most children are going through demonic torment, even at early age. And most Parents don't know this. I know of a child that I was asking the child to say Jesus. The child could not say Jesus. And the child was crying. Say, please, I don't want to say Jesus. But after deliverance, that child began to say Jesus. And say, Jesus is my best friend. If we don't deal with what is attacking our children when over time the spirits anchor and take root it becomes difficult to deal with children could get possessed through many ways and one of such ways that parents should pay attention to is the kind of movies and video games that their, their children play so we are going to pray for our children, for the children of this generation, for children all over the world. We are going to pray for them to be delivered from demonic possessions or obsessions or oppressions. We are going to lift them up in prayer 
and cry to the Lord. And I tell you, God will bless you as you cry to him to touch the children and to deliver them. So with this point in time, we are praying against demons of anger, demons of rejection in the lives of children. We are rebuking such spirits, demons of fear, demons of abandonment and rebellion. Look at the kind of rebellion in the society today. Look at the kind of drunkenness in the society today. Pornography has become an industry. Oh, Jesus. So we are rebuking these spirits that are using the youth, the young men and women, possessing them, using them as tools to, to work in his kingdom. We are praying that God shall deliver the children. And we are rebuking the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of drunkenness, the spirit of pornography, the spirit of sex and drugs that are released into these children. May this spirit be crushed and be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that want to crush their trust in God, let God use this prayer to crush them, to paralyze them, to cripple them in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Let God fight for the children. As we are standing the God for the children, God is using this prayer to deliver them now. Many children are picking interest in all cults. Many children that they call it the phone. They don't know they are getting into mess. They don't know they are getting into something that's killing their destinies. Hey, Jesus. So we are praying now. Oh, Jesus. May God deliver children from seeking interest in the occult initiations. In the name of Jesus. We cancel every satanic initiation. In the name of Jesus. We cancel them now. We pray against rising interest in occult among the children and all occult related practices that are attractive to the children, that are making children to pick interest in them. We are breaking such spirits tonight in the name of Jesus. It is the time of worship. It is the time of God. It is the time of melting point. Power must come down. It is the time of warfare. It is the time of battlefield. It is the time of burning time. All power must bow down. It is the hour of melting point. It is the hour of cry out. It is the hour of breakthrough. Power must change and it is the hour of blessing. It is the hour of deliverance. It is the hour of warfare. Power must change and any power that fights against us, a power that fights our life, every demon that fights our children, fire consume them. It is the time of battle. It is the time of battlefield. It is the time of freedom. Every kingdom must bow down. Every kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness must bow down to the mighty Jesus that have brought these children and want to use them to bring glory to his name. My dear people of God, the devil has vested interest in, in, in teenagers. Not long ago, I went to a psychiatric hospital to pray for a, a, a young girl that had a, 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 her life was just messed up. You know what I was surprised to see? In that psychiatric home, you see young boys and girls. You see young men and women. People that were supposed to be in school. But they were in psychiatric homes. Because the devil have come to attack their destinies. Hell. So this prayer is a very serious prayer. So we are decreeing Standing on prayer point 7D. We are decreeing in the name of Jesus and the declar declaring in the name of the mighty Jesus Christ that the children of this generation 
are God's warriors. They are God's warriors. My children are God's warriors in the name of Jesus. They are God's warriors for their generation in the name of Jesus. I decree that the children of this generation shall be God's battle acts of war against the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, I decree that the children of this generation shall carry the mantle of fire. They shall carry the fire of Elijah. They shall carry the mantle of, mantle of Moses. They shall carry the oil of Samuel in the name of Jesus. They shall carry the faith of Daniel in the name of Jesus. Can someone begin to pray a prayer? Yes, my Lord. Jesus, I decree that even the, the youth of this ministry, they are the lighters of our time. They are the Moses of our time. They are the Samuels of our time. In the name of Jesus. They are the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abaddon ghosts of our time. They are the Daniels of our time. In the name of Jesus. I decree that all my children are part of God's generals. They are part of God's generals. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Begin to pray now that your children are part of God's generals in the name of Jesus. They shall be used in this end time to deliver the world from the hands of the devil in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, begin to pray now. Call on Jesus to appear to your children in the dreams, in the visions, in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray now. Let the prophetic mantle of your children manifest even at early age. In the name of Jesus, let Jesus begin to appear to them, even in their classrooms, even in their schools, even in their dormitories. Let God begin to appear to them. Let God begin to speak to them. Let them hear the voice of God in the name of Jesus. Let the hearing the voice of God become an epidemic among children of this generation. In the name of Jesus, instead of evil, instead of occult, becoming epidemic among the youths, instead of pornography, becoming epidemic among the youths, we are praying, let the hand of God begin to shift into the spiritual realm in the name of Jesus, such that through this prayer, there will be an epidemic of righteousness among the children, among the youths, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Let there be an epidemic of prayer among the youths in the name of Jesus. Epidemic of love among the youths in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Let there be godliness. Let there be godliness among the youths. Let them begin to desire the word of God. Let them begin to desire fellowship with Jesus. This is our prayer. This is our prayer. They, many of them are sleeping now, but we are praying and asking Jesus, appear to them in the dream. Appear to them in the dreams. Appear to them in the dreams. Speak to them, Lord. Talk to them about your second coming. Speak to them, Lord. Let them begin to seek your word. Let them begin to love the Bible. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. We are praying over the schools, praying over their school teachers, praying over the playgrounds, play, praying over the, their friends, over their classrooms. Let the blood of Jesus begin to locate them now in the school. Let the blood of Jesus begin to destroy everything that is evil that is taking place in the school. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus begin to clean the school system. In the name of Jesus, begin to cleanse them. Whatever thing that is being taught these students or being taught our children, that is not of the scripture, that is not of the Bible, such so spirits will cancel. In the name of Jesus, every teaching that is ministered to them to believe that there is nothing like God, to, to believe that Christianity is a box. We are canceling that mandate. We are canceling that teaching. In the name of Jesus, let the Holy Spirit begin to teach our children. In the name of Jesus, let our children listen to the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, we are coming our children now. Our Lord Jesus is the Lord. They will follow, follow the ladder. They will follow the ladder. They will follow the ladder to heaven. They will follow the ladder. They will follow the ladder. They will follow the ladder to heaven. They shall follow the ladder to heaven. Our children shall follow the ladder to heaven, not to hell. Any of them that are on the ladder to hell, we are asking God to break that ladder. 
to destroy the ladder and let our children come back. Let them enter into the ladder that leads to life, the ladder of Jesus, the angelic ladders. Father, we thank you because we know you have answered us and we are grateful. You are mighty God. To you be all the glory. Begin to thank him now for what he has done tonight. We cover this prayer with the most precious blood of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We cover every part of this prayer with the most powerful blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Pray now, thanking him. Thanking him and covering yourself with the blood of Jesus. Covering all that you have received through this prayer with the blood of Jesus. And the seven times we minister the blood of Jesus over this prayer. The most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cover us and these prayers. The most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cover us and these prayers. The most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cover us and these prayers. The most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cover us and these prayers. The most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cover us and these prayers. The most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cover us and these prayers. The most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cover us and these prayers. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. And so I invite you, whatever place you are, to lift up your hands over our brother and our sister that God used in the course of this message. Ask God to bless them. Ask God to strengthen them. Ask God to replenish them. You need to talk to God about them. It's the time to water he that water it in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Father, as your people are praying over your children, we are thanking you because we know you are answering them already in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As you are praying over your people, may you answer them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we are invited to join our sister in the Thanksgiving song to thank the Lord for what the Lord has done for us this night. For he has blessed us mightily. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, my Lord, thank you, our God, thank you, our God, thank you, thank you, God, Jesus, our Lord, smile, Jesus loves you, I will smile, Jesus loves me, hallelujah, Smile, Jesus loves you. You will smile, Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for all you have done and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Mother, friends, we thank God for such a night. And uh, tomorrow, our fasting continues.